Hello again, and welcome to SCLC TV. I'm Maynard Eaton, your host, and of course, our president and CEO, Dr. Charles Steele Jr. Dr. Steele, Ahmad, and Marbury is still in the news. Uh, in fact, you are on the news stations across the country today talking about that case and a sense well, saying yeah. racism is still alive. Right. Uh, I was interviewed uh, by several TV stations in regards to uh, what took place in Brunswick. And uh, I don't think man, we could ever get to the complacency of not talking about this particular incident because that's what the problem is. Uh, we've been saying it for many of years that people are afraid to talk about the real issue of racism. And it's nothing more than another virus uh, like COVID-19. Uh, it's contagious, it's embedded in you, it's invisible. It's a silent killer. And we're saying that due to the fact that we have the corruption of the culture of the judicial system, inclusive of law enforcement and the courts and, and with the district attorneys there in Brunswick, in Glen County, that's, that's covering up. And my position is that Everyone in law enforcement who knew about this video and saw it and did not bring about the justice or the courageousness to discuss it and to expose, to bring about these criminal charges, they should be prosecuted and should be labeled as criminal criminals themselves. Is that why the GBI is also investigating these two other prosecutors? But do you think the gentleman who took the video, what do you think of him? Is he a hero here or he's part of the crime? The jury is still out uh, on, on that particular situation. But it seems to know the, the public opinion is leaning toward the fact that had it not been for this gentleman, Mr. Bryant, uh, Mr. Bryant taking the video of what took place, there would be no crime. There would be no incarceration. There, there would be no one charged with this brutal and criminal a horrific murder that took place. So the jury is still out. Public opinion is still out. Uh, but the impact of what he did is bringing about a balancing act that you have to say, thank God, regardless of what his role was, someone had enough conscience and they put the the ripeness of mindset that's embedded, hopefully somewhere along the way where they say, hey, this ain't right. We got to have justice. And I'm in a position to bring about justice. Now, by the mere fact he went to his lawyer, tells right. me that he tried to do something right. And right. all I'm saying is that you wouldn't be educated to the fact that racism has raised his ugly head again, had it not been for this young man going to his lawyer, and his lawyer suggested we need to let the world and the public know this. Something is good about that. But also, Dr. Steele, don't you imagine, while we got when we got this video, we saw what happened with Amar Arbery, how many others have not been seen? Isn't that, that, that the, what, what, what's fearsome is that so many other folks have been murdered and we knew nothing about them? Absolutely. Thank God for the iPhone and the, and the video capacity of recording these types of incident. I would like to ask them at some point, face to face, person to person, what gave you the inclination to sit in your truck knowing and feeling, evidently he had to have some kind of inclination of feeling that something was gonna take place. And he positioned himself to record uh, the video that ultimately got these two uh, gentlemen, father and son, incarcerated and hopefully will be prosecuted and found guilty of murder. Dr. Seals changed the subject a little bit. Um, COVID-19, the president wants the country to open back up again. Uh, many states are doing that. Is it too much too soon, you think? And how is this impacting the poor and brown people of color? Well, first of all, let me just say this. That should be no mass, no mass unemployment. 
in this country because of the pandemic, because of COVID-19. I said it several times before, I'm going to say it again. This country is too rich to have a massive furlough or unemployment of its people. We have taken care of this, go this government for many of years. This is a rich country. There are other countries that's working from month to month, quarter to quarter, and they committed to a year or two to say, we're not going to leave our people stranded. Because if you don't take care of the people, then the people will not be responsible in terms of looking out for the government and being appreciative of the government. When my food runs out and I can't feed anyone, the next person I'm looking for is the one that I think that should be concerned and my protector. And that would be my neighbor, that would be my church, that would be my friends, my family. How can the government remove itself from a crisis such as this? Well, COVID-19 is a big crisis, but one that's evenly as large as COVID-19 is that folks going hungry. They don't have anything to eat. I told you, I've seen folks eat out of the garbage can right here in the city of Atlanta, Georgia. I've seen folks sleeping on the street. I've seen folks in my entrance path every morning when I go to work. And I'm walking over to them and telling them politely and get cursed out nine out of 10 times. Let me sleep so-and-so, so-and-so. You don't disturb me. But sir, this is SCLC building. I'm president CEO. I don't care to do this. So, I have to be very respectful to that and still urge them along the way and still clean up because they use their waste right there in front of my building. They have lost respect not only for themselves, but for the government and anybody that stands in authority. Well, the problem is getting worse. That, that problem of people in front of our building had been there for a while, but now people are getting right. desperate, don't you think? I mean, don't you fear a, a, a mass uprising of crime and destruction? I mean, that's what... That's what I'm fearful of. People can only take so much without reverting to some other um, drastic means. First law of nature, self-preservation. Right. And when you have the arrogancy that we have in this country, and it fills, filters down to others, even, even subliminally, subconsciously, you don't see it, but the leaders are arrogant and, and, and bring about a standoffish type of attitude. And one lady looked at up at me yesterday when I was removing her from our interest. She said, y'all just don't give a so-and-so, so-and-so about folk because y'all think y'all got it made. And I said, ma'am, not me. I'm here to protect you and others. But first of all, you must be respectful of who I am as an individual. And this building is a property owned by the Southern Christian Leadership Conference and you cannot urinate here in front of my building. But you made a point, man. We've been seeing this around our office for many of years. A building that we have, uh, a little over 10 years, maybe 10, 11 uh, years now. But the people were there around us, but now they are at the door. They never been at the door before. Yeah. They never been under the steps before. They never been eating and going through the garbage can before. Now, it is more intense than it was the last 10, 12 years since we've been there at our building. And we're saying that I just basically believe in Frederick Douglass in, because he was a great cliche man. His, his cliche, you know, they say power concedes nothing without a demand. Power concedes nothing without a demand. It never did, and it never will. Never we will. have to demand this thing. Oh, well, yes, sir. Frederick Douglass, end quote. We have to demand. We're not demanding anything. Oh, that's just Charles Steele. He's talking again. That's made of Eden, and he's talking again. And, 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 and people are not concerned about their fellow brothers and sisters, you know, Treat your neighbor as thou Finally, what, what do you think we're, we are? We have a crisis with uh, this COVID-19 for sure. 
that's impacting the essential workers and the least of these the most. Then we have the rise of racism, as you suggested, and as represented in Glenn County. As a civil rights leader, are you equally concerned? I mean, how do you wrestle with both problems? How's, how, do, well, how, do, how, do, how do activists wrestle with both dilemmas? Well, first of all, uh, you pray. <laughs> you, you, you pray. See, and that's part of the problem. We forgot who woke us up this morning. I had a miracle this morning, man. I woke up and uh, I, 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 I was not awakened by my alarm clock. God woke me up this morning. God instills in me and God protects me. You know, I go in harm's way around the world. You know, first of all, you have to be courageous and you can't worry about a headline. See, too many of our folks concerned about it, a headline. Involved, don't you think? Are you worried that these these twin concerns are being unleashed? I mean, is, is there a way of putting a lid on the racism problem and the and the violence against poor and black people? Of course. Of course. You you can you you have to walk and chew bubblegum at the same time. You know, but the point being is that you can't wait for this news to carry your being involved or you giving a great speech or this, you chip away at it. And somewhere along the line will elevate your concern and your embeddedness or courageousness to lead a movement with other people, not by yourself, to coalesce. See, we have to have a coalition of people. I always say, Dr. King, greatest trait and character in terms as a human element of leading people was that he was a great listener. And after he listened to the people, he moved. People didn't fall for Dr. King until he died. They fought right. Dr. King. So the same folks around him, the same people he was trying to help, they, they, they didn't care for him. They disrespected him. They say, who he think he is? He should be somewhere preaching somewhere. Why he out here with the garbage workers? Why he left uh, being officer or being some type of educational specialist in terms of his background and he out here on the street margin. It's because he had a calling from God. And there are different ways to educate folks. You can educate folks more about margin than being an activist than you can being contained by the brick and mortar. People see Finally, you. sir, are you concerned? Yeah, are you troubled? You say? Pardon me? Finally, are you concerned? Are you troubled as to where we are now today with, with all that's going on? I'm always troubled, but I'm sustained in hope. Uh, faith is everything. Yeah, I, I'm grounded, uh, Mr. Eaton. You know, I've been in this thing 45 years, straight up, never taking a break. 45 years, not counting my teenage years. 45 years I've been dealing direct action with SCLC, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. 45 years, been married 42. But every day of my life, I've been involved in the movement. And I've been very successful in a lot of things. That's when people begin to relinquish the successes that we have as a people because we have not been healed from slavery. See, you still got to go. We are internally and on the inside because we don't understand the transatlantic slave trade. We don't understand the brainwashing. We don't understand the overseer house Negro. We don't understand where we have come from and we're ashamed of it. But that's why I travel the world because as I travel the world, People tell us, we know that you all are the chosen ones. How can you ever imagine or dream upon going to Israel and the leadership in the state of Israel tells you that you all are the chosen ones and we know it. I guarantee you, you'll never hear that in America. But the Orthodox Jews, when I was in Israel, told me that, that you all have set the cadence. You all are the leaders of the world. You have proven that God is in the midst of what you're doing. And many people have forgotten about God and the Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. But then you have to that. 
into your everyday being. You can't go to the bank and talk about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, but guess what? You can live the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and the bank will, and he will give you the, the loan to do your projects, or the businessman will fill it. But you have to be about the action of Christianity and not be afraid to let people know who you are through your actions. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to Dr. Charles Steele Jr., the president and CEO of SCLC. See you next week.